Jack, great to see you again. Well, thank you, Paul. Thank you for inviting me to this fine restaurant. Yeah. Appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. I hope you like it. It's, it's one of my sure. favorites. Um, you know, I was just reading, to, I know you're writing a book on, on Greece and its debt problems. Uh, I think a lot of people have for, even forgotten about it, thought it went away, but I just saw something in the paper uh, that the EU just a couple of weeks ago approved the next check to be written for, for the bailout. Um, like I said, I, I think most people would think that was all over. It's not in the news anymore. What is happening in Greece mm -hmm. and this big debt problem? Well, the debt crisis uh, will, will not end in Greece and any time soon. It will erupt again. And what you just read was the IMF turning the screws one more time on the Greeks, giving them a little bit more money to pay the interest on the money they already gave them. And in exchange, the Greeks have to agree to more austerity. And more austerity? Kind of more austerity. Uh, I thought they were kind of austerity out. <laughs> well, you know, their economy is still 25% uh, down, which is depression. That's, that's 1930s depression. It's been that way since 2010 in Greece. Yeah, and huge unemployment still, right? Still 25% unemployment in Greece. I mean, those, those folks have been locked into depression, uh, not of their own making, but of uh, the Northern European, the Germans and their allies, and the European Union is the source of their crisis and their debt. Um, in, w in what way? Yeah. Well, uh, in 1999, uh, Europe uh, passed the European Union. In other words, uh, the, in the Eurozone, excuse me, not the yeah. Union, but the Eurozone, where 19 countries would have the Euro currency. Now, that really benefited Germany because Germany then would loan the money to Greece, Italy, Spain, the periphery, mm -hmm. loan the money to buy German exports. So the private sector and all- That's convenient. Yes. <laughs> and I'm gonna give <laughs> you the money works out. and you're gonna give it to me back, <laughs> right? Uh, and that's how the private sector, the banks and private companies got indebted in the periphery. And then the 2008-9 crash occurred. Mm -hmm. So now the banks and the periphery and the companies couldn't pay back the money they had borrowed from, from German and other banks, you know, the Dutch and so forth in the North. They couldn't pay back. So these European, uh, pan-European organizations, the European Commission, the IMF, and, and the uh, ECB, European Central Bank, loaned these governments even more money to pay the interest and principal on the money that the private sector borrowed. So the debt in the private sector got transferred to the government. And that was just the beginning because the lack of real growth in Greece and the periphery ever since, and another recession in 2011-13, uh, they couldn't afford to pay back. So they had to loan them more money to pay back the interest that they owed them on the previous on loans. The previous money. And that happened in 2012 and it happened in 2015. It was about to happen again, but the IMF said we were going a couple weeks ago, well, uh -huh. about a month ago, yeah. said we want to get this out of the way with Greece because we are worried about a Brexit. So that's why they prematurely cut another deal with Greece, a small one, more austerity, more loans to pay interest on the old loans. There was a study done. I'm picturing water circling a drain. Yeah, exactly what it is. In other words, we're going to loan you money, and you pay us interest on that money, and you're going to use that money to pay off the interest and the principal on the previous loans. It's a never-ending downward cycle. That's why they're trapped in debt. Yeah. But why... Uh insist on austerity in the midst of this, doesn't that kind of fly in the face of economic theory that uh, they need to be stimulating their economy to, mm -hmm. to get the economy chugging again? Well, whose theory? <laughs> whose economic theory? You, you see, the people running neoliberals and the bankers and so forth don't believe in this uh, fiscal stimulus. Uh -huh. They believe in central bank monetary stimulus. In other words, give all this money, trillions of dollars, to, to the private banks so that they will loan it out to private business and hopefully private business will invest to create jobs. Well, what's happened globally, not uh -huh. just in Europe, is trillions of dollars have been given, 15 to 20 trillion, to the private banks through the central bank. The private banks have not loaned it to create jobs in real things. What they've done is 
invested in financial assets and stocks and bonds or loaned to shadow banks, hedge funds, equity firms who speculate in financial securities, right? Or loan it to multinational companies who invest abroad, or they just sit on the cash, you see. So, so it, it, it doesn't get into jobs. Making jobs or manufacturing mm. anything other than more paper profits? That's right. Huh. For, for the few. That's why we got this big income inequality. Not only are wages not growing, but the financial profits and returns, capital gains, on a small group that I call the global finance capital elite now, who are very influential, about 200,000 of them worldwide, you know, maybe 50,000 of them in Europe. They're making huge profits off of finance, and they've got the periphery in Europe, especially Greece, locked into this debt. That's why I call it a new kind of financial imperialism. They're extracting the interest, and austerity is the way that people have to pay for the interest. So they don't want fiscal stimulus, you see. They yeah. only want monetary stimulus. Fiscal stimulus is the required flip side of the monetary stimulus. That's why Paul Krugman and his friends, you know, they rail against what's wrong with the Europeans. Why aren't they? You know, he can't understand why they're doing this. Well, there's a, there's method to this madness that they have. So they don't really want Greece to recover. They want Greece right where it is. They don't want to have to stimulate their economy to get Greece to recover. Yeah. You see. So, uh, you know, there was all this popular uprising in Greece back when this was in the, the headlines and this popular party, Syriza, came to power. What happened to all that energy? Uh... Well, Syriza was, was a, a kind of a left of center formation which was made up of uh, small business and, and radical uh, professionals and some working class and you know, some communist parties, some socialist parties, so it was a coalition. Yeah. And their whole approach was, we're gonna end austerity, right? Yeah. And they came up against this neoliberal mountain called the Troika, you know, three part, European Commission, IMF, and the European Central Bank. And the European Central Bank and the IMF just waited them out, would not loan them any money, to, undertook certain measures that brought their banking system in Greece almost to a halt. And Syriza eventually collapsed in terms of resistance last August and capitulated. Yeah. Yeah. And the progressive elements left the Syriza party and now it's just another sort of, uh, um, you know, middle class uh, professionals that are playing along with, with the game in, in Europe because, face it, you know, Greece is very small. They could not, they, they could not face off the Troika by themselves. They had hoped that some of the, some of the uh, uh, social democratic parties and governments in Europe would back them up. That was their whole hope. Uh, but as I've said in other interviews, you know, the social democracy is, is, is uh, disappearing in, in Europe. They are aligning themselves with, with the corporate neoliberal interests, and uh, they found, they sort of found no friends. Yeah. And they were, without those allies, they were at a tremendous disadvantage. They could never prevail by themselves. Well, don't leave me, just don't leave me hopeless before we go into dinner, but uh, <laughs> what's the way out for Greece? Or is there a way out? Is there any stirring of a new popular movement to say no to uh, the Troika? And, and... Well, I mean, realistically, real politics, I mean, you have to have independent political parties arise that will not play the game with the neoliberal corporate capitalist parties, right? Uh, but in the case of Greece, it's so small, it needs to be part of a broader independent political party coalition within Europe because only with these other allies will they be able to really challenge the neoliberal consensus. Uh, but the other countries have not really in Europe developed these independent parties fully yet, right? We've talked before about, you know, Podemos in Spain, uh, Five Star Movement in Italy. Soon there will be something in France. Labor Party's fighting for its soul right now. There's splits in it. Maybe De Linke in, in, in Germany. These parties have to uh, become significant enough where they can all join together and challenge, uh, Euro-wide, challenge this banker-controlled, free-trade, Euro, German-led, 
coalition, neoliberal coalition that, that has Europe in a stranglehold except for the investors and bankers, just like here in the U.S. Yeah. Okay, well, it's going to take a transnational movement because it's a transnational problem. Yes. Okay. Yep. You're writing a book on Greece. Yes, yeah, called it? Looting Greece, the Emerging New Financial Imperialism, how now imperialism, colonialism is taking an, a financial form and even on the uh, periphery of the advanced economies. Watch for the same thing similar may be happening in the U.S. in the case of Puerto Rico. And when's the book due out? It's due out in August. Okay. You ready to order? Let's go. Okay. Waiter? Thanks, Jack.